Are the hills alive with the sound of music, or should we bid it a to sing goodbye? Find out today on Really Old Movies. Welcome to Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin, and today I'll be discussing The Sound of Music from 1965, starring Julie Andrews. So essential movie details. This is based on the classic Broadway musical by Rodgers and Hammerstein, and based on the real-life Trap Family Singers. And this film was released March 2nd, 1965 in the United States. The setting is 1938 Austria, when tensions are building up in Europe as the calm before the storm of World War II. Maria, who's an irreverent nun-to-be, she is sent to the Von Trapp family to be the children's new governess. What she doesn't realize is that the children are terrible to all their governesses as a way of getting their constantly absent father's attention. All of this as Germany is creeping into Austria just before the beginnings of World War II. All right, so the plot for The Sound of Music, I gave it a five out of five. This is one of my favorite stories. I love the development of Maria from a nun to a governess to a mother. I also thought the growth for Captain Von Trapp was really good as well. His heart is eventually softened as he finally sings with his children again and as he's slowly falling in love with Maria. Now the acting, I gave a five out of five. All of the child actors were really, really good. They were all very believable as children. They didn't feel fake. But ironically enough, uh, the actress who played Le- Liesel, who's like 25 or whatever in this movie, she's obviously not a kid. She's actually the fakest of the actors, and I thought she wasn't the best. You would think that like the little, little girl would have been the worst actress, but no, it was actually the, the oldest. So I thought that was pretty funny. I love Julie Andrews in this movie. She totally steals the show in every scene she's in. She's absolutely perfect for this casting. And I love it in the scenes where she's like singing with the children on the mountain, teaching them how to sing. And she's running around with them all around Austria, having fun with them. So, yeah, I think she was perfectly cast. And then Christopher Plummer, too. I think he's very believable as a very stern captain. A captain that has no nonsense, that has very strict rules. Right. He's very believable. And when you read the behind the scenes, how he initially hated working on the movie, he would call it the sound of mucus. It's just totally perfect for his character. You know, he actually didn't want to be there. Right. So it fits perfect for him. All right. Now down to directing. I gave it a four and a half out of five. I thought it was still really good, but there were some awkward pauses, especially in scenes with Julie Andrews and um, like the camera focuses too long on her when it should have been cut like a few frames earlier like uh she does like weird pauses where she's like breathing in and then she moves forward it's kind of awkward looking um but honestly other than that it was perfect i I loved it and the fact that he was able to capture the kids being so well behaved is insane like i can't imagine how much of a nightmare that would have been there were i think seven kids right yeah well six real kid actors and that's crazy is very impressive stuff he was able to do there but uh robert wise he's the director he he did some pretty good work um he's known for being the editor of citizen kane magnificent ambersons but he's also known as being the director of the day the earth stood still west side story the sound of music star trek the motion picture and uh those are those are the most uh, noteworthy films he's made. He's a pretty talented director. He's kind of got a wide, uh, widespread of films. They're all very different genres. So he's he's pretty great. So other than that, great great directing. Now cinematography and special effects, I gave a five out of five. I thought it was superb, especially in the introduction of the film. The camera is kind of flying towards Julie Andrews, and then it cuts to her singing on the hill, if you will. <laughs> Um, love that moment. I also love the scene where uh, Maria is getting married to Captain Von Trapp. That's beautifully shot. The giant, beautiful cat, uh, cathedral that they're in. It's amazing. And just the scenery all around was beautiful as well. They actually did film parts of the movie in, uh, 
in Austria, where the, the story takes place. Now, granted, most of the scenes were made on the studio lot in L.A., but they did some real scenes, real shots in Austria. That's very impressive what they were able to do with that. So it looks beautiful, as always, over there. But yeah, i very impressed with those scenes, the scenery. I will say there are a couple things that weren't perfect with the cinematography. Like there's a couple times, especially at the end of the film, where you could tell that there's like a helicopter flying right next to the actors and filming them because there's like wind and like the leaves and stuff are moving around in a weird pattern. And then when the camera pulls back, you see it stop moving. So you could tell there's like a helicopter there, unfortunately. But other than that, it, it's great. Now, in regards to the music, this is a musical after all. I gave, of course, a five out of five. This has some of the greatest songs of all time, especially the opening number, you know, the, the sound of music. Um, and later in the film, the children sing it, and it's beautifully done. I love Edelweiss. It's a great song. I love So Long Farewell of We Do Sing Goodbye. That's a great song. And How Do You Solve a Problem Like Maria. All the songs are really, really good in this movie. It's hard to decide which one's my favorite, but probably the my favorite overall is it's either Edelweiss or Sound of Music. I'm going to have to go with Edelweiss. That's a great one. Um, but yeah, th that's the highlight of the film right there is the music. It's fantastic. Really good stuff. And you, you can see why this is Rodgers and Hammerstein's uh, magnum opus. You know, it's incredibly done storyline incredibly done music and i think that's due to the fact that this good chunk of this actually happened you know the von trapp family they were real this is a real group of singers it was a real family you know so we as an audience can connect with that because it's not only is it real people but they had real struggles they had an evil impending you know group of germans coming in to invade the country right it's crazy how how relatable that that is and so overall my final letterbox score is a 4.8 out of 5 which i'm rounding to a 5 out of 5 it's a fantastic musical one of the greatest musicals and greatest films of all time and i'm just a sucker for these kind of movies that are centered around world war ii whether it's before or during the war and also about my ancestry even though i'm german um my uh, heritage is German, but German and Austrian is German and Austrian is very, very similar. And I really love seeing that culture going, you know, the beautiful backgrounds, the beautiful buildings, the beautiful landscape. I'd love to live somewhere like that. It's beautiful over there. Would I recommend this film? Is this uh uh, is this one where the hills are alive or do we have to say a free to sing goodbye? Of course it's good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes, I hundred, one thousand percent recommend this movie. It is a great musical that needs to be seen by all. But at this point, how many people still haven't seen it? This is like the biggest musical of all time, even bigger than Lame is, in my opinion. Um, yes, I, I absolutely recommend it. Uh, keep in mind, it's about three hours long. It's got a great intermission, you know, a great place for it to stop. I think that's a great place to put it because the tone of the movie changes when we come back uh, from the intermission. So keep that in mind. It's about three hours long, but it honestly goes by really quick. I, I think it's a great film. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode and make sure to subscribe to our Instagram and Facebook at Really Old Movies. And new episodes will be released at a different day and time now. I, I hate missing my deadline, so I'm changing that to Saturdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And it will be released on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Also, make sure to follow us on YouTube at Really Old Movies, where I do live streams and currently doing my top 10 uh, favorite movies from each decade of all time, starting with the 1920s and finishing with the 1960s. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. This has been Really Old Movies. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin. Take care.